इंटरेस्टेड स्वैप्स आई आर एस इंटरेस्टेड स्वैप इज ए फाइनेंशियल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ए फाइनेंशियल एग्रीमेंट बिटवीन टू पार्टीज एज पर दैट एग्रीमेंट दे एग्री टू एक्सचेंज और स्वैप फ्लो ऑफ इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट्स ऑन ए नोशनल प्रिंसिपल and this exchange will be on multiple occasions during a particular period this exchange of interest payment can be of fixed rate with a floating rate of a floating rate with a fixed rate or one floating rate with another floating rate but both having different benchmark so interest rate swap is a financial contract between two parties according to that agreement they agree to exchange or swap the flow of interest payments and principal amount will be notional amount and this exchange will be on multiple occasions during a particular period the exchange it can be of fixed rate with floating rate or of floating rate with fixed rate or of one floating rate with another floating rate but with different benchmarks so let us explain this concept by way of an example we have company x and company y and they want to borrow us dollar 10 billion each at a minimum possible cost for a period of 3 years with annual compounding as far company x is concerned they want to borrow at a floating rate because they expect interest rate to decline in future so they would like to gain out of that but it actually borrows at fixed rate and swaps it with cash flow of company y now similarly company y they want to borrow at a fixed rate because they expect interest rate to increase in future but they actually borrow at floating rate now this means these two parties have opposing needs one of them they want to borrow at floating rate another want to borrow at fixed rate but actually they borrow at opposing rates and then they swap that now let us see what are the interest codes available for these two companies in the market the bankers of these companies they are ready to offer these codes so company x is having double a rating fixed rate interest fixed rate loan is available at 6% interest rate and floating rate loan is available at libor plus 1% for company y which has credit rating of a fixed rate loan is available at 8% and floating rate is available at libor plus 1.5% from this we can easily say that company x it has absolute advantage over company y of 2% for fixed rate lending and 0.5% for floating rate lending this means the bankers of company y they are charging 2% premium or risk premium on fixed rate loan and 0.5% risk premium on floating rate of interest compared to company x so we can also say there is absolute gap of risk premium of 1.5% when we compare both the rates now if risk premium is compared company y has an advantage if it borrows at floating rate because the gap in fixed rate is of 2% and gap in floating rate is 0.5% so there is advantage of 1.5% if company y borrows 
at a floating rate. If risk premium at both the rates would have been same, company B would not have been having any comparative advantage. So this comparative advantage is available to company B because there is a difference in the risk premium. Now this risk premium difference is an opportunity for company B to arbitrage. Now both the companies can borrow independently and then they can swap that interest. And whatever arbitrage opportunity is there that is to make profit out of this they can share that according to their negotiation. So here the arbitrage profit opportunity is available of 1.5%. Now they can decide what should be the sharing ratio. For the purpose of our example, so we assume that they agree to share this advantage to the extent of 0.75% or 75 basis points each. If both the parties were having same credit rating, the arbitrage opportunity would have been not av been available. So this arbitrage opportunity is available because they have different credit rating and they are charged different fixed rate loans and they are charged different interest on floating rate loans. Now how this SAP deal will be structured? Here company X they borrow at 6% and company Y, they borrow at LIBOR plus 1.5 percent. So that loan is available to them from their lenders. Company X, it agrees to receive 6.25 percent from company Y and company Y agrees to receive LIBOR plus 0.5 percent from company X. So that is structure of the swap deal. Now, how much gain is going to be there on this swap deal? Let us see what is going to be the, going to be the gain on the swap deal. So at fixed rate of interest, company X is benefited by 0.25% because company X will receive 6.25% from company Y and they will pay to bank 6% so there is a gain of 0.25%. Similarly at fixed rate company Y is gaining by 1.75%. How? They will pay to bank 8% fixed rate but to company X they will just pay 6.25%. So their gain is 1.75%. Now if this is seen at floating rate. What is going to be the gain? At floating rate, company X is gaining 0.5% because if they raise this loan from bank, they will pay LIBOR plus 1%. But they are paying 0.5% plus LIBOR to company Y. So there is gain is 0.5%. And let us see the gain or loss of company Y. So here company Y will be put to loss of 1%. How? So they will be paying to bank 1.5% over LIBOR and they will be receiving from company X 0.5% over LIBOR. So clearly they are losing 1%. On the whole if we see their total gain, so the total gain is in case of company X 0.25 plus 0 0.50 so 0.75. Similarly in case of company Y 1.75 minus the loss 1% so they are also gaining 0.75. So both the companies are gaining out of this swap deal. 
so they are able to reduce their cost of borrowing so net gain to both these companies is 0.75 percent or both of them then can lower their cost of borrowing to that extent now let us see the break even floating rate for company x if rate changes against one of these companies so that company stands to lose let us see how company x is going to lose or where the company x will be breaking even let us assume library is 5.75 percent and company x will pay to company y library plus 0.5 percent that is 6.25 percent so company x will pay to company y 6.25 percent and company x receives from company y 6.25 percent as per this swap deal so company x receives from company y 6.25 in other words there is no gain there is no loss so this is going to be the break even rate for company x so break even rate for company x would be if library is 5.75 percent then it is break even for company x if library moves beyond 5.75 percent in that case the company x shall incur loss so that will be loss making proposition for company x and last part if there is default in payment what will happen if any of these companies default to pay what will happen so here company x has taken bigger risk compared to company y because company y has lower credit rating and they are more likely to default and in case they default and library is 5 percent then how they are going to be the situation so company x will pay fifty five thousand dollars at five percent and company y will pay sixty two thousand five hundred so company x pays to company y fifty five thousand dollars and company x receives from company y sixty two thousand five hundred dollars and in this process there is net gain of seven thousand five hundred dollars so net gain is seven thousand five hundred dollars now let us assume that company y defaults to pay this amount to company x in that case what will happen if company x if company y does not pay to company x then company x will also not be paying to company y so at the most this net gain of seven thousand five hundred dollars that will not be received by company a company x in such situation at this large amount loan of 10 million dollar the gain of 7500 which company x is to make will not be available to them and thereafter once this default takes place there will not be any further exchange of interest swaps so at the most company x will not be able to earn this gain of 7500 thank you friends for watching this video i hope you will find this video informative and useful thank you once again